The Spirit of Aloha Temple from the North Shore of Maui presents Om Aloha and welcome to Spirit of Aloha Temple. Uh, it is October 2023. My name is Swami Swarup Ananda, also known as Frederick Swarup Hanig. I am the head minister of the Spirit of Aloha Temple, and I am a Hindu monk, a Swami. I, I uh, lived for 20 years as a Swami in Swami Sachidananda's ashram in uh, Buckingham, Virginia. And um, I had the great fortune during those 20 years of studying with Swamiji as well as many other great saints in the uh, spiritual field. And uh, I have developed my own meditation practice over the last 50 years. And um, I do a type of meditation called Nada Yoga, where I hear a high-pitched tone, the divine choir, that I'm able to hear all the time. And uh, when I become quiet, uh, I can keep my mind perfectly still. And during that stillness, uh, inspirations come to me, which to me are communications from the unit of field. And uh, I feel um, honored and also that it's my duty to uh, share with the world uh, what I'm downloading uh, because I believe that it is possible to have heaven on earth or at least to have a, 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 a um, world without the institution of war. I think it's possible to achieve that and that within our lifetimes that is our duty to achieve and if we don't achieve that we could be one of the last generations on planet earth because we're getting very good at causing problems for each other and getting very sophisticated at that and we should be using our genius and the gifts that god gave us to do good for the world and my goal is to do good and uh, this is my attempt to share with uh, the world, uh, what wisdom I can offer, and how I think the planet could recalibrate uh, to uh, be able to uh, live in the spirit of aloha, live in God consciousness, and live in peace on planet Earth. So here is my humble t uh, offering, and uh, I'm grateful to you for taking the time for considering these ideas. Right now, what's very uh, pivotal in the world and really is very uh, important is the solving of the Palestinian-Israeli crisis. And I was born in a Jewish family, but I have studied with yoga masters and with probably the world's greatest spiritual masters from all different lineages. And so I don't consider myself just to be a Jew. I consider myself to be an integral yogi which in, in, um, encompasses and embraces all the different religious paths as meaningful paths to attain the one unit of consciousness that we are in essence. There are many great spiritual paths and, and I am here to uh, share with you uh, my sense of how the world right now could recalibrate to be able to be um, peaceful and ultimately moving forward. I'm going to start specifically with the, 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 the current Palestinian-Israeli um, conflict that's going on right now. And I'm going to give a little bit of a background to it so we can put it in context. Um, I believe that the unit of consciousness, who we are, the one unit of consciousness, um, its goal is to serve one and all. Like it, it, it has the intention of knowing who am I? It wants to know who it is. The one consciousness, who we are, is consistently um, asking the question, who am I and how may I serve? That is the nature of our unit of consciousness. And in order for it to do that, it creates many life forms and it sees through each one of us. Like it, The unit of consciousness is animating all of us and seeing through all of us and working through all of us. But it gives us something called free will. And uh, free will is something like, like this earth plane that we're in right now is somewhat of a test. It's something like, say you have a, a car and you want to test to see whether it can safely drive without a driver inside of it. 
Uh, you want to see will that car work or not. This planet is something like that. Like all of the souls that come to planet Earth are being tested in a way to see if they are aligned with their own conscience. Like the conscience that we are, the unit of consciousness, gives us the awareness of I am, that awareness of I am, and also the desire to serve the same way it has the desire to do good, to help the planet and the, and the uh, creation evolve and grow and live in harmony. Uh, the one unit of consciousness that we are gives us free will to test whether or not we are connected with our conscience enough to do what the unit of consciousness would want us to do. And if we are aligned with the will of the unit of consciousness to serve one and all with love and devotion and skill, you know, with our full um, chi to do good for planet Earth. If we uh, hold on to that awareness uh, ourselves, then our minds flower and we attain the state of unit of consciousness ourselves, which is the goal of life. The goal of life is to let go of your ego consciousness and to instead experience unitive consciousness. That is what we're here to do. That is the goal. Most people get hung up in the ego conscious level and they never go beyond that. And part of the ego consciousness is to think that I'm the best and everyone else is less good. And whatever I am doing is the best. My religion is the best religion. My country is the best country. And what happens to other countries and other religions is not my problem. That is the ego thinks like that. But God does not think like that. God thinks all the people, all the creation are my are my children and let there be harmony between all of them and it wants diversity the the unit of consciousness loves diversity it wants to have many different paths to the same unit of truth not just one path each of the great world religions are tried and proven paths to unit of consciousness if you really follow the religion but there are people who claim to be religious leaders who are filled with ego and will lead their, their parishioners astray and thinking that they have to do the, um, that they should um, have violence toward other groups and things like that, all out of egoism. Egoism has penetrated religion. So I'm not saying that everything that happens in the name of religion is what God would want to have, because that is not the truth. In the name of Jesus, more wars have been created um, than almost in any other way, uh, name. The, the, um, the Crusades happened in the name of Jesus where um, that millions of people were slaughtered. The, the um, the Inquisition happened in the name of Jesus, and all kinds of wars and things that Jesus would never want to have happen in his name or in anyone's name um, have occurred. So I'm not saying that the religions as they are practiced all in humanity are all perfect, but the teachings are. Like the teachings will, through each of the great religious paths, aspirants have attained unit of consciousness. And that's the goal of religion, is to bring people together, to bring the world together is religion. Religion means to bind together. Yoga, yoke, to bring together is what religion is. And we as a human family, here and now, the people living on planet Earth who are alive now, have the duty of protecting nature. We're, our God, the unit of consciousness, created us as nature guardians to help uh, maintain the balance of nature and also to help serve each different culture so that each culture thrives and that all the different species thrive and that there's harmony on planet Earth. That's the goal of this show. 
And in order for us to experience that unit of consciousness, we have to learn certain things. And the first are uh, the ethical perfection. The yogis call that yama and niyama. The um, Judaic, Christian, and Islamic uh, people call it the Ten Commandments. But there, there's ethical perfection that is needed in order to achieve anything in the spiritual realm. And without that, in, uh, that, that mental um, purity, um, the souls, the jivan, will have one miserable birth after the next after the next. And that's what can go on for thousands of births. There's no limit until one um, attains the state of um, moral, a balance so that one vibrates with the unit of consciousness with the thought of how may I serve and you dedicates one's life to service and once that happens the unit of consciousness can function right directly through the mind and through the body direct drive and great things can happen like all the great masters attain that state of unit of consciousness Jesus Mo uh, Moses Mohammed uh, Buddha and many, many others. They're not the only, they're just the, those are just the well-known ones. There are thousands of other who, are, who are, may not have even been known about who've attained that same state of unit of consciousness. When one attains that state, one will see all of the world as your family. You won't see in your mind when you're looking at other people that they're different than you. You'll see them as just the same essence that is expressing through you is expressing through them. There's only one consciousness behind all of us. All of us are experiencing the same ultimate consciousness. The consciousness, the one unit of consciousness is functioning through all of us. So here we are here and now in 2023 in a very great dilemma with Israel and with um, Hamas and the Gaza um, situation. Uh, Israel, um, if one believes in the Bible, one will know that in Genesis, um, God, the unit of consciousness, promised to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the land of Israel as a homeland, a promised land. And the Jews have a greater claim to that piece of land than any other culture in the world has to their land. Uh, all two-thirds of the, of the population of the world trace their, back, their lineage back to Abraham. All the, the Jews, the Christians, and the Islamic world are all tracing their lineage back to, uh, to Abraham. And so in Abraham, in the Bible, it says that God, the unit of consciousness, gave that land of Canaan, uh, Judea, Judah, and now called Israel. It's been also called Palestine, that land um, that is now Israel, um, to uh, the descendants of Abraham to be a moral compass to the world and to share to the world the, the wisdom that God gave those people to share. And uh, throughout history, the Jews have been a very small minority amongst very powerful groups that have made it difficult for them to fulfill their mission. And um, over the years, the Babylonians came and kicked the Jews out and made them into slaves in Babylonia. And uh, the Greeks came and caused problems. And uh, ultimately, the Romans came and um, completely uh, desecrated the temple and, um, <clears throat> and um, expelled the Jewish people from their holy land so that they had to be in exile, in exile for almost 2,000 years. And um, in those 2,000 years, the Jews went through a tremendous amount of suffering. They went through uh, the Inquisition, where they were tortured. They went through um, the Crusades, where they were also massacred. They went through pogroms in Russia. 
They went through being um, completely um, forced to leave their homes from Spain and Portugal, the Iberian Peninsula at one point. And then their trauma culminated in uh, the 20th century with the Holocaust. And uh, six million Jews were lost there. Right now, there are just 14 million Jews that are living in the whole world. About one third of the world's population right now is Islamic, and one third of the land mass of the entire planet is under Islamic control. And about half of the planet is under Christian control. The Jews have this little tiny sliver that is smaller than they've ever had before. When, when uh, in the time of Abraham, the um, Judea was much larger, the map of Judea, than it is now. Uh, during the time of the um, King David, the land was much larger than it is now. And during the time of the, when the Romans um, um, desecrated uh, the, the state of Israel uh, and caused all of the um, Jews to be exiled shortly after the life of, shortly after Jesus was crucified. Um, the, at that time, Judea was larger than it is now. And in, um, after the Second World War, when the Balfour de Declaration was made for the partition of uh, Palestine so the Jews could have a homeland again after having lost six million of their uh, country, their, their um, part Jews, uh, instead of getting the whole Israel back, they got just part of it back. And the part that they didn't get back, the Gaza part and the West Bank part, that were remain Palestinians, have been used um, since 1948 as a way of, uh, for the Arab world to try to eliminate the state of Israel. And I will say this to the Arab world, to those who consider themselves part of the Arab world, that the Jews are your brothers too, and they're also descendants of Abraham. And they have the right to live on planet Earth in harmony and peace. And it's not right for the Egypt, for the Islamic world to have one third of the world's land mass and not allow Israel to have a little space the size of New Jersey for its land. It's in, in certain places, Israel is only 10 miles apart or 20 miles across. It's a very slow, a tiny little sliver. But the, the, the Gazan, the, the Gaza Strip and the West Bank have been used by the Arabic world as proxy war, to, to form proxy wars against Israel. And, that, and that's their, the, 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 the reason that the Arab world wants Gaza and um, the West Bank to survive is because their goal is to eliminate Israel completely. And they're teaching hatred in, to their kids. Like even starting at five years old in Iran, they teach that the Jews are the enemy of the Iranians and that the, the duty and the goal of the lives of those children is to see that Israel is eliminated and that the, um, that the infidels are cast out. And uh, that kind of hatred should not be taught in any, to anyone. To, for any people to teach hatred of another people to their children is um, against the United Nations Charter. The United Na the, the, those countries that are teaching hatred to their children should not be allowed to be members of the United Nations. And no um, civilized country should trade with them or interact with them or support them in any way. And that's the morality that is needed for the Arabic people right now is to give Israel the, the full uh, its country back completely and let it live in peace. Make peace accords with the full um, um, extent of Israel's map. And I believe that the map ultimately of Israel should be included to be the same map that, that was Israel had before the Romans um, 
con conquered Israel and, and caused the um, Jews to be um, dissipated all over the planet. And when the Romans did that, not only did they burn the temple, they also stole all of Solomon's gold. That country of Israel had enormous wealth that was all plundered, and they took that, they used that gold uh, to build the Colosseum, and they took the, the, the Jews back to uh, Rome as slaves to help them build the Colosseum. And then to um, and then after the Colosseum was done, to feed them to the lions so they could enjoy watching the Jews being um, eaten by lions. So that kind of um, hatred that has been um, perpetrated against the Jews um, was also causes its backlash because in the Bible, God said that those who Bless Israel, I the Lord will bless. And those who curse Israel, I the Lord will curse. So you see that since um, when the Jews are completely deprived of their right to practice their religion and to serve humanity with their full gifts, uh, the rest of the world suffers. It's not that, the, that what happens in Israel and to the Jews is um, isolated from what's going on on planet Earth. If the world wants to have peace, it has to give Israel the right to have peace within its own borders. And what happened with Hamas now, it shows the depravity, the way that God has cursed the Arabic people or the Islamic people who are um, against uh, the Jews. They've made their minds so sick that they would allow and, and, and support the massacre that happened in October 2023 in southern Israel, where the Hamas um, terrorists came and just massacred 1,400 people in cold blood, including children and, and um, grandparents. It's just, it's, it's the height of depravity, you know, and it, it shows a sickness, like a, a, a horrible sickness in a, in a civilization that would, um, you know, condone something like that. Iran after said they would kiss the hands of the terrorists who did that. That's what Iran is saying. Iran is sponsoring Hamas and sponsoring Hezbollah in southern Lebanon to do a proxy war with the Jews so that Iran doesn't have to fight the Jews. He, they let the Gazan people do it. And what has to happen now is that Israel has no right, no country can allow um, another country to come in and, and slaughter 1,400 of their people and not react to that. So right now, the the Islamic world is trying to make Israel look guilty for defending itself with the Gazan people. But it is the guilt falls squarely on the shoulders of the Islamic people, and I'll say why. And I'm talking also here to the liberals of the world, and particularly the liberals of America, you know, who somehow think that it's the Jews who are being offensive here because the Jews only lost 1,400 people, but the Gazans already have lost 5,000 people in Israel's um, uh, defending itself. But the, the, this is the truth of the matter. When Ukraine was invaded by Russia, which was also a horrible offense, and I'm not, I think it's one of the sickest things that have happened, you know, that it could have imagined that in, in the 20, in, in this century that we would be having tanks rolling in from one country into another. I thought we would have thought that that era was over. But when that happened, Europe absorbed six million of the Ukrainians fled, so they're not being used as uh, human shields. But the Arab, the, 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 the Islamic world 
is purposely keeping the people in Gaza from leaving so that they have to be killed when um, Israel uh, bombs Hamas's targets. And that's what's going on now. And you have to look clear carefully to see every single person who was hurt in Gaza the, the blame for that is with Hamas only. Hamas is the blame for that. And Egypt is to blame for not allowing the Gazan people to escape into Egypt. You know, Europe absorbed almost one third of Europe right now is, is uh, Arabic or, or Islamic people because Europe is following the you know a christian way of helping people who are in need and so when the uh, when the arabic people from syria who have been in wars in lebanon from wars are looking for refuge they come to europe and europe has accepted them almost one third of europe is is arabic now and uh also the um other countries have also accepted Arabs, but the Arabs are not accepting Arabs. Like, look at how it would not be difficult within one third of the world for the two million people who are in Gaza to be absorbed into other countries and to be given refuge. And, and, and but that, the, and, and let Israel have its full borders back and let there be peace in the world. That could happen. It's not difficult for that to happen. The, the people who do not want to have that happen, and I'm not saying that it's all the Arabic people at all. I'm not saying, I'm saying it's the people who are in control, the powers that be in the Arabic world who are um, creating Hamas and, and uh, Hezbollah to be uh, their proxy war with Israel. And, and also they're using it as a um, way to make the world think that Israel is somehow barbarous in the way that they're treating the, the Palestinians. But the Palestinians, you know, under um, the Camp David Accord, many times the, the, the um, Israeli leaders have offered everything that, they, that Hamas wanted and uh, the Palestinians wanted in peace, but the Palestinians never accepted it. They, do, do, they don't want peace. They do not want peace. They never want to see. They want every two years, they'll start, like, everything's peaceful. Everything was peaceful with Gaza. You know, in October of 2023, um, uh, Israel had opened up a lot of uh, the border and they had la settled down with their um, uh, border restrictions uh, and opened things up so that things were um, becoming more harmonious. But out of the blue, Hamas doesn't want to see that happen and they'll attack um, innocent people during a holiday. Um, to um, create as much havoc as possible and leave Israel no um, way other than to have to retaliate. Not, they're not retaliating against the, the, the um, Gazan people, the Gaza people. They are um, defending themselves, doing what they need to do to defend themselves. That's all. And right now, I would say to the liberal people, to all you who are hearing this tape, this video, this is what my real point is. Use whatever influence you can to, to, to support Israel and to lay the blame where it squarely deserves to be with the Islamic world. Demand that the Gazan people be released from Gaza during this war. There is no way that, that they should be getting hurt. Right now, if the, if the Arabic world would just evacuate the people from Gaza, anybody who wants to get out should be allowed to get out and escape until this war is over. Let them out of there so there are not all those civilian casualties. It's the Islamic world who has to do that. The, the Europeans allow the Islamic people in. The Islamic people are not allowing their own people into their countries. They're using them as human shields. And that's what's happening right now. 
They are using them as because they want the world to be deluded into thinking that Israel is is um, the aggressor here and causing the problems for Palestine, which is not the truth. Israel desperately wants to live in peace. It does not have any. Um, uh, hard feelings toward the Islamic world. It wants peace. It's doing everything it can to have peace. It's the, Islam the Islamic world who is not allowing the Jews to live in harmony in, in their promised land. They're trying to squeeze them out of that little New Jersey size square footage and make them smaller and contract and do whatever they can to make it difficult for them. That has to end. There has to be peace accord between all the Islamic world and Israel. And only then will, will Islam thrive. Until then, all the atrocities, you look at what's happening in the Arabic world. Women are treated like peasants, like they're treated in the most pathetic way in the Islamic world. Like in Afghanistan, the women aren't allowed to go to school. What kind of pathetic, and, and the rest of the culture of Islam is not, you know, standing up against that. You know, in um, the women are not given the rights they deserve. Also, a human being needs to get some sunlight. Like if you take a woman and cover her up from head to foot with material, she won't be getting any sunlight onto her skin, which means she won't be getting vitamin D, and vitamin D is necessary for human life to thrive. So, so no woman should be made and forced by law to have a cloak over their face so they can't live on planet Earth and get the sunlight they need to be healthy. It's pathetic. And so I say to the Arabic world, grow up and be uh, who uh, Allah would want you to be and Muhammad want, would want you to be. Be loving, compassionate uh, members of the human race and don't embrace terrorism. Anybody who embraces terrorism is going to be cursed and I'll tell you why. Violence breeds violence. Anything we do comes back to us. That's what karma is. Like this world is controlled by karma. Karma is the action that comes back to it. And every country has its karma. When one, when one country um, causes war and havoc to another country unnecessarily, it's not out of, for any beneficial purpose. It's just to eliminate an enemy. Um, and if they're not really enemies, the Jews aren't enemies of anyone. Like if you look in the human race right now, Jews are only 14 million. They're less than 1% of the human population are Jewish. And that less than 1% has given tremendous benefit to planet Earth. If you look at the Nobel Prize winners in physics, and philosophy, and almost every level, there's a very high percentage of Jews who have contributed to that. The Jews are contributing to the well-being of the world in many very dynamic, positive ways. And they should be allowed to thrive as a people and not to be, for thousands and thousands of years, constantly um, killed and made to go through misery. They should be allowed to live in peace. And the other thing is about is that if you look at Martin Luther King, and if you look at Gandhi, they had the philosophy of nonviolence. They, like if um, Gandhi won the independence of India from Britain, which at that time was the strongest power in the world, just through nonviolence, they won that. They won their independence. Martin Luther King won the civil rights um, for black Americans that allowed a Barack Obama to become a president um, because he practiced nonviolence. It's through nonviolence that anyone can attain whatever is needed. But no one can achieve anything through violence. Through violence will only come more violence and more violence and more violence. There's no end to it. There's no end at all. So the Islamic world has to wake up. This idea of jihad is is delusion. It's delusion. No one can attain peace through violence. The, the Islamic world has to renounce violence. They have to stop teaching hatred to their children. They have to be um, um, 
peaceful members of planet Earth. And until that happens, the entire Islamic world will be remain in the chaos that it's in now. And there, even if it has a lot of wealth, there's misery th throughout the Islamic world right now. And it'll stay like that because God will curse those who curse the Hebrew people. And he will bless those who bless the, the, the people. And that's what's happening. So I say to the Islamic world, you are our brothers and our sisters. And I'm not claiming that this is for all the people. I know that there are the vast majority of the people who are in the Islamic world are beautiful people whose intention is to do nothing but good for planet Earth. And I have no doubt about that. But I'm talking about the leaders. And every country has to be responsible for their leaders and not allow their leaders to do things that are completely against the Quran. The Quran is not about, would, do you think that Muhammad would be grateful to see his children going in and slaughtering innocent people and taking hostages of children and grandparents back as hostages, he would not. Allah would not be happy to see that. That is not what humanity is about. Humanity is about loving service. It's not about um, achieving goals through violence. So beloved family, I talk mostly to the liberal Americans and liberal people of the world. Support Israel. Israel is the underdog here. Israel only has four, there's only 14 million Jews, I think 6 million in Israel. That's all. We have to support Israel to be able to be the light that it is, that God made it to the world. And to support Israel, we have to um, encourage the Islamic world to accept the people from Gaza. Do not use them as human shields. It's, it's the Islamic world that's doing that. They could be sending buses in there, airplanes in there, whatever they need, and evacuate all the people because Israel has to go in there and get rid of all of those tunnels and all of that infrastructure that Hamas has dug in to that area. And they're going to have to get in there to do that. And people should not be used as human shields for that purpose. That There's going to have to be a lot of clearing done in that um, Gaza Strip. And until that happens, this war will not be over. And in order to have this happen, um, the, the Islamic world has to allow those um, human shields to um, escape into their countries and give them refuge during this time. And if they don't do it, they are responsible by God's power. You have to see that world. It is not the Israelis who are responsible. Every death that's happening in Gaza is the, the direct responsibility of the Islamic world. And the um, world has to see that and the world has to stand up for what's right. So um, I wish you um, the, the, wit the ones who are witnessing this video and the ones who are here now on planet Earth to do your part to help avoid World War III and to get this <clears throat> situation settled uh, local, like small and a small scale without growing into an international world war. And that is my wish to you and my wish to the people of the world that we live in peace that we live in brotherhood, and that we support Israel to um, continue its noble work to inspire the world with its um, brilliance on so many levels. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time to join us here. If you have the opportunity, please visit us on our website, Spirit of Aloha. Dot org. You can see there's a 21-minute documentary that will tell you about our Spirit of Aloha Temple here on Maui. And uh, there's also a lot of videos there on uh, unit of consciousness and how to experience the God within us. And uh, I also invite you to visit our YouTube channel, which is um, Spirit of Aloha Temple on YouTube. We have all kinds of wonderful videos there, too. And also, if you want to email us, I'm happy to communicate with you. And also to work with other groups who are aligned with this um, vision uh, for having world peace. And I think that this is just the first one I'm talking about, Israel. But there are other 
um, um, visions that I have too for the Hawaiians and for the well-being of all the native um, cultures of the world to have representation in the United Nations. So I have a vision for heaven and earth within our lifetimes, and I, and I invite you to join us and, uh, in that vision. So thank you so much for this, and I look forward to uh, meeting with you again soon. Mahalo. The Spirit of Aloha Temple from the North Shore of Maui.